الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم. There is no doubt that studying the book of Allah سبحانه وتعالى is extremely important because the Quran ولله الحمد has everything. You find in the Quran the عقيدة. You find the adab, the etiquette. And mannerism, you find the ahkam, the rulings, and other than that, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Ya ayuha nasu abudu Rabbakum aladhi khalaqakum waladin min qablikum laallakum tattaqun aladhi jaala lakum al ard fi rasha wa al sama abina wa anzal min al sama ma an fa akhraj bih min al thamarat rizq lakum fa la tajalu lillahi andada wa antum taalamun." He said, O oh, people, worship your Lord who created you and those before you, so that you may become conscious of Allah who has made the earth a resting place for you and the sky as a canopy, Allahu Akbar, who sends down water from the sky and brings forth with it fruits for your sustenance. Do not then set up rivals with Allah. While you know the truth, Allahu Akbar, and that is the worst oppression ever. When you set up rivals against Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, when you ascribe partners with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, imagine your parents. They raised you. They went through so much, and then when you got a college degree and you and you got a job and everything, and you turn around and say to them, "You know what? I don't know you." How are they gonna feel? Yeah. Subhanallah. We're not making a comparison here. We're just like giving you an example. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the one that gave you all this ni'am. You can't even count this ni'am of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala upon you. You cannot even pay Him back for the oxygen. Because if Allah takes it away, we will all die. And so it's from His blessing, Subhanahu wa Taala. The Sheikh he said, "This is a universal dictation for all people that Allah is to be worshipped, because He said, 'Ya Yuhan Nas, O people, this is for all. This comprises of obedience to Allah's orders, refraining from what He has forbidden, and attesting to His. Hence, Allah has ordered His creation to do what they have been created for." Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسِ إلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ." This is what they were created for. I created the jinn and human only to worship me. That's the reason why Allah created us for worship. Afterwards, an argument has been given about worshiping only Allah, as He is your Lord. He after affording you with His innumerable bounties you cannot even count them nourished and fostered you he brought you from nothingness to be in allahu akbar he created those who came before you he provided you with all the physical and spiritual bounties who has made the earth a resting place for you so that you can build your homes upon it from it you obtain various benefits Like constructing buildings, agriculture, and farming, Allah Akbar, Allah, and farming, and traveling from one place to another. In addition to these, you obtain many other advantages from this earth. Allah made the sky as a canopy for your abode, and He created in it many things which are a benefit to you, such as the sun, Allah Akbar. If there was no sun, imagine we have we didn't have the sun. What's what's going to happen to us? Uh, yeah, we would not be able to survive without the sun. You know, and how the the crops going to grow without the sun? They can't. Even if you have rain, you don't have sun, and also you need uh, the sun for your skin, for your for your health. A lot of things, you know, and also, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.
we don't really appreciate the ni'am of Allah upon us. Wallahi, we don't. As we're supposed to. Yeah. So he said, the moon and the stars, who sends down water from the sky, everything that is far and above, is termed as sky. Quranic mufassirin have deduced that the word sky used here denotes cloud. Thus, Allah rained water from the clouds and bring forth with it fruits. With this water, he causes the growth of various kinds of food grains. But subhanallah, look, water is only one. But look at the growth. There's so many, subhanallah, so many. We said of various kinds of food grains, fruits, edible dates, and other agricultural produce for your sustenance. From them you obtain your food, nourishment, and other requirements for sustaining your life and receiving pleasure. Do not then set up rivals to Allah. Do not equate things from the creation, from the creation with Allah. Do not begin to worship them as you should worship him or love those things as you should love him. Similar to you, they are also a creation of Allah. They are fed by Allah and their needs are fulfilled by Allah. They are not owners of even a particle in this entire universe. Subhanallah. You know, there is an ayah in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they will not be able to create qitmir. Qitmir is um, actually the membrane that is on top of the, um, the date pit. They will not be able to create that. That membrane, subhanallah al Allahu Akbar. So he said, they are not owners of even a particle in this entire universe, they can neither provide for you any benefit, nor can they cause you any harm. And this should be our belief, Ikhwan, brothers, yeah, sisters, those who are listening with us. It should be our belief that whatever Allah wills will happen. Whatever Allah does not will will not happen. In any situation you are, you have to be like that. The Sheikh, the Sheikh Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, while you know that no one equates or resembles Allah in his acts of creation, nurturing and running the system of this universe, and either is there anyone who can match Allah's divinity and perfection? How can you then, knowing all this, worship other than deities beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is the highest extent of irrationality and idiocy. This, this, fir, this verse conjoins both the statues of worship solely for Allah and the prohibition of worshiping anything beside Allah. Furthermore, this is an argument regarding the mandatory obligation of worshiping Allah and not worshiping anyone else. This is Tawheed, Rububiyyah. Singling out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his lordship. Because it is only Allah who creates. You know what's really funny about this? What's really amazing? The mushrikeen, even though they worshipped idols and all this, they believed in Tawheed al-Rububiyyah. They believed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator, the sustainer, the provider. Allah said in the Quran, وَلَا إِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَيَقُولُنَّ اللَّهِ if you were to ask them who created the heavens and earth, they would surely say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If that's the case, then why are you worshipping Allah wal uzza wa manat? Why are you worshipping his idols? And this is the same situation today. And unfortunately, in many Muslim countries where people worship this uh, so-called awliya, you find a shrine and you find the people going around the shrine of this wali and uh, kissing the shrine 
and some of them they even sacrifice to the to the wali, to the person, uh, this holy man who's created, who who is uh, buried in that grave, and this is all shirk billah. This is all shirk billah. The sheikh he said, rahimahullah taala. This is Tawheed Rububiyya, because it is only Allah who creates, provides, sus- provides sustenance and controls the entire universe. When everyone accepts that, that there is no partner to Allah in carrying out all these tasks, then they should also accept that there is no partner to Allah in worship. See, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started out with Tawheed Rububiyya. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is informing us that he is the one that created us. He's the one that provides for us. And if that's the case, then it is not permissible for us to worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Shaykh he said, then they should also accept that there is no partner in worship to Allah in worship. This is the strongest argument about acknowledgement of Allah's tawheed. Negating the concept of associating any, anyone else with him so that you may become conscious. The first meaning of this verse can be that if you worship only Allah, you will, you will be safe from his wrath and punishment. Since you have adopted the route which annuls Allah's wrath, a second possible meaning can be that when you become true and firm worshippers of Allah, you will become righteous. <coughs> you become righteous and bear Allah's consciousness in your mind. Both these meanings are correct, reciprocal, and strengthen each other. Meaning, whoever worships Allah perfectly is counted among the righteous, and whoever becomes righteous is freed from Allah's wrath and punishment. وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّن مِّثْلِهِ وَادْعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ مِّن دُونِ اللَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ فَإِن لَّمْ تَفْعَلُوا وَلَن تَفْعَلُوا فَاتَّقُوا النَّارَ الَّتِي وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةُ أُعِدَّتْ لِلْكَافِرِينَ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says after that if you are in doubt concerning what we have sent down to our servants Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then produce a surah comparable to it. And what's really amazing about this, the Arabs, they, they excelled, especially Quraysh, they excelled in the Arabic language, so much so that they used to uh, make uh, poetry and they used to compete, the tribes used to compete with one another. And they would hang it on the Kaaba. They would hang their poetry on the Kaaba so that the other tribe can see and then they come another tribe and hang their, their poetry there. So this, their Arabic was, was amazing. With, with all this, uh, because now they have all this ability, they could not bring and produce one ayah like the Quran. They could not do it. Because it's impossible for them to, to do so. It's impossible for them to do so. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and call upon your witnesses other than Allah if you are truthful. But if you cannot do this, and you never will, subhanAllah, you cannot and you never will, then fear the fire whose fuel is men and stones, prepared for the disbelievers. This is a scholarly rational argument to support the veracity of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah's revelation upon him. If you are, this is in fact, is like saying those who have an enmity with the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those who have denied his proffer, those who think he is a liar. You know, they call him a liar, they call him a magician and all this thing. If you are in some doubts about the revelation, whether it has been sent down by us upon our prophet, whether it is true or not, then there is something here that can decide between him and you. He too is human like you. 
and he is known to you since birth. He has been amongst you, and you are aware that he is illiterate. So now he presents a book to you, claiming that it has been sent by Allah, but you say that he has fabricated it himself, and is placing blame upon Allah. How could that be said? You know, how could that be said? Because how could he fabricate, <laughs> subhanallah, this Quran, this amazing, glorious Quran? How is, how is that possible? You know, and he's illiterate. So he was illiterate. And that's, subhanallah, that's in itself is a miracle. Because if he was literate, they would have said, well, he fabricated it. You understand? But since he is illiterate, what are they going to say now? The Shaykh, he said, Rahimahullah <clears> Ta'ala. <throat> but you say that he has fabricated it himself and is, and is placing blame upon Allah. If such is the case, as you claim, then come and produce just one similar surah. <laughs> one similar surah. Call in as many of your friends and accomplices as you wish. Subhanallah. You know, there is another ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قُلْ لَوْ اجْتَمَعَتِ الْإِنسُ وَالْجِنُ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَأْتُوا بِمِثْلِ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لَا يَأْتُونَ بِمِثْلِهِ وَلَوْ كَانَ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ ظَهِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if the jinn and human were to get together to bring the like and to produce the like of this Quran, they would not be able to, to do so even if they were to support each other and back each other up. They would not be able to do that. Allah Call in as many of your friends and ac accomplices as you wish. Doing this would be very easy for you because you are the self-claimed champions of literacy <laughs> and oratory. So they were the champion of this. Then why, why, why you, what are you waiting for? And also the enemies of, of the Prophet, that's another reason why you understand. If you are his enemies, then if you have all these qualifications, why aren't you, why, what are you doing? What are you waiting for? It is my challenge to you that if you are able to present just one surah similar to those in this book, all your false accusation would be proven true and you will be rightful to, to term this book as a lie. But if you fail to produce just one similar surah and you surely will, completely fail to present it, then this helplessness and failure would be an ample and clear proofs of the authenticity of our Prophet وسلم, and the revelation. It will then become mandatory for you to accept and follow it and save yourselves from the fire whose heat is so intense that its fuel would be men and stones. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. From it, which is dissimilar to the fire of this world whose fuel is wood. Subhanallah. This fire has been prepared for those who deny Allah's Messenger. So when you come to know that my Prophet is true, then you should be afraid of denying him. This verse and other similar verses have been termed as the Haddi. Challenging verses, challenging verses, which are meant to make the creation incapable of producing a book like the Quran. Thus Allah says, قُلْ لَوْ اجْتَمَعَتِ قُلْ لَإِنْ اجْتَمَعَتِ الْإِنْسُ وَالْجِنُّ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَأْتُوا بِمِثْلِ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لَا يَأْتُونَ بِمِثْلِهِ وَلَوْ كَانَ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ ظَهِيرًا Say of all the people, jinn gathered together. All the people and jinn gathered together to produce the like of this Qur'an. They would not produce anything like it even if they helped one another. Thus, how can a person's word whose creation is from a mere speck of dust match the sacred word of Allah? Allahu Akbar. How can an ever needy creature compose words like those of Allah, the ever perfect? who has no need or concerns 
accomplishing this is entirely beyond the meager power of humans. Subhanallah. Anyone with the, with the least bit of knowledge about the basics of literature will then, comparing the Qur'an's verses with the human literature, immediately recognize the gap in difference between the two. In Allah's statement, if you are in doubt, there is a strong argument that anyone who is in doubt and is perplexed with his doubtfulness, then guidance is possible for him. This person cannot identify truth because of his misguidance. But if he is sincere in his search, it would be easier for him to accept and follow the truth. Then it becomes clear to him. As for the person who has animosity against the truth and reject it after identifying it, there remains no chance of him accepting the truth. You see the difference between the two? The first one is confused. He needs some guidance. Second one, he knows the truth, but he denied it. This one is worse. Because the other one, there is a possibility he may be guided. You just say, Akhi, uh, this is the, the proof from the Quran, from the Sunnah. This is Jazak Allah Khair. Everything is clear now. And they accept. The Shaykh, he said, and inshallah, we'll, we, we will finish with this, inshallah ta'ala. He said, since he did not refuse the truth because of ignorance, but rather rejected it after recognizing it to be the truth. As such, the doubtful one who has no sincere desire to search for the truth but rather avoids it and does not make an effort to find it, will often remain devoid of the ability to accept the truth. To speak at this point of the virtue of obedience endowed to the Prophet ﷺ is a true testament that this was the greatest trait no one from the former and the later generation has ever attained this eminent status. Allah has described his Prophet ﷺ Prophet's virtue of servitude on the occasion of Al Mi'raj, night of journey, when he said, Subhanalladi asra bi abdihi laylan. Glory be to him who took his servant Muhammad by night. This virtue of servitude has also been mentioned on the occasion of sending down the Quran. Allah said, تبارك الذي نزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرا. Blessed is he who sent down the criterion, the Quran, to his servant Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, so that he might be a warner to all of the world. We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to grant us all beneficial knowledge and righteous action. الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على محمد. وآله وصحبه وسلم